This video demonstrates the functionality of Roku's multi-user account access feature within the developer dashboard. So you can see here that I'm currently logged in as the illustrious Sherlock Holmes. Under manage my channels, you see that there are no channels associated with this account. And so I'm going to take care of that by actually creating a channel right now. Uh, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to click add channel and I'll make it an SDK channel and I will title it Demonstration Channel Sherlock. And so I can just go right to the bottom here and uh, go ahead and save the account. Now that I've saved that, I want to go back to manage my channels just to show you that there is a channel that has been created. So you can see uh, Demonstration Channel Sherlock now exists, but there's actually no image associated with it, right? I didn't even get that far in the channel creation process where I uploaded the channel poster. So when I go back to the developer dashboard, Again, I'm still logged in as Sherlock, and I want to show off uh, how this multi-user feature actually works. And so to do that, I'm going to start by clicking on Manage User Access. And this is the page where I can actually uh, add a user to access Sherlock's account. And so the first thing I have to do is click on Add a User. And so once I land on this Add a User page, I'm allowed to add a user to access uh, Sherlock's developer dashboard. And so in this case, I'm going to add his trusted partner, uh, John Watson, and I'm going to give him some roles. And so roles are administered either at the account level or at the channel level. So some roles, uh, like the products role, is given universally. If I give this role to John Watson, he can create in-channel products for any channel within uh, Sherlock Holmes' account. And then there's other roles, uh, like channel management, that actually is granted at the per-channel level. and what this means is if I give John Watson the channel management role, I also have to go and select from the channels that are associated with Sherlock Holmes' account. I also can grant John Watson um, an organization that he's associated with. So I can log out of all the different users who have access to this developer dashboard, I can sort of keep track of where they work. Um, and in John Watson's case, I'll say that he's a private detective. And I'm gonna go ahead and create this user. John Watson has been added to this account. And you can see that right here as well. You can see John Watson, he's a private detective, um, he has the products role, and he also has the channel management role. I'm going to now go over to my email client as John Watson. So over here I'm logged in as John Watson, and I'm going to go, and you see that this email just came across real time. And so when I click on it, it says that the administrator of Sherlock Holmes granted you access to manage their Roku developer account. And of course, if as opposed to being an individual, if I had actually enrolled as a corporation or as an organization, um, then it would show the organization name here instead of showing the individual's name. But notably, it, it gives me access to this account. So if I click on switch dashboard account, it will bring me as John Watson. So on this browser, I'm already logged in as John Watson. If I weren't, it would ask me to log in. Um, but it brings me to a screen on John Watson's account uh, where it allows me to select between different accounts that I have permission to. And before I do that, I just want to demonstrate that I am indeed logged in as John Watson currently. And so to do that, I'm going to go to John Watson's channels and you see that I have no channels associated with this account. So like uh, the Sherlock Holmes account moments ago, there are no channels associated with John Watson's account. And again, I also will sort of just prove that I'm John Watson right now by uh, showing you my account settings. And so with that, I'm going to go back to my developer dashboard. And then I'm going to click, instead of manage user access, this time I'm going to click on switch dashboard account. And this is the same page that I landed on earlier when I accepted the email invitation. And I'm going to go ahead and select an account to access. And you'll see here that I actually, as John Watson, have already been granted access to several accounts. So Mr. Hyde and Dr. Jekyll have both granted me access. And as we just saw, so did Sherlock Holmes. And so for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to click to access Sherlock Holmes's account. And I'm going to submit that. And again, I'll see that I was successful in doing that. And here's what I have access to. This is sort of the aggregate uh, permissions that I've been granted access to across both the product role that I was granted and also the manage channel access. And so when I click OK on that, it brings me back to the developer dashboard and everything seems to be the same, except note that this time I am actually accessing Sherlock Holmes's account. And as John Watson, 
accessing Sherlock Holmes's account, there are certain things I cannot do. So for example, if I try to change Sherlock Holmes's developer information, you'll actually see that I am told that I have no access to this page. So I'm going to go back now, and upon going back, you'll see that again, I am accessing Sherlock's account. And so what I'm going to do now is actually take an action as John Watson, but accessing Sherlock Holmes's account. And so I'm going to go to manage my channels. And the first thing you'll notice on this page is this big notification that lets me know that I am accessing this page on behalf of Sherlock Holmes. And so there's only one channel here. This is the, you'll notice that it's the same channel I, I just created as Sherlock Holmes. And I'm going to click preview and update. And so from here, I can start to modify uh, the metadata associated with this channel. And for this demo, I'm going to skip ahead and modify the channel store information. And so from here, I can add some arbitrary metadata. I can provide a channel store web description. This is a channel. And so I can also upload a channel poster. And so finally, I can add some descriptive category for the channel. And I'm going to go ahead now and click Save. And so just to demonstrate that those changes did stick, I'll go back to manage my channels. And you'll see that the channel poster did indeed upload. And so that's all I'm going to do um, while acting on behalf of Sherlock Holmes. And so here I'm going to go back to this original browser where I was logged in as Sherlock Holmes. Again, I am not John Watson accessing Sherlock Holmes' account here. Rather, this is me genuinely logged in as Sherlock Holmes. And to demonstrate that, I can click on my account, and you'll see that I am indeed Sherlock Holmes. So the reason I came back is to just show you that as Sherlock Holmes, now if I go to manage my channels, even when I'm logged in as Sherlock Holmes, not as John Watson, that change that John Watson just made to my account on behalf of me, Sherlock Holmes, is saved to my account. So this is one of the many benefits of the multi-user feature, is that it actually allows you to operationalize the tasks and functions that you need to perform in channel management and elsewhere across the developer dashboard, across your company and with other folks that you work with. Now, the final aspect of this feature that I want to demonstrate is one of viewing account activity logs. So this is the idea of actually seeing what other individuals who I, who I have given the permission to access my developer dashboard, this is the idea of seeing the activities they've made while accessing my dashboard. Um, and so to do that, I'm going to click on Manage User Access, and I'll come back to this Manage User Access page. And again, I've only granted John Watson access. And when I click on Account Activity Logs, I actually see that that action that John Watson had previously taken on my behalf is now stored here in the logs. Now, let's say, for example, I might need to edit his permissions or revoke his permissions outright. And I can always do that by going back to the Manage User Access page. And if I want to edit his permissions, I can click here on the Edit icon. And of course, I have the ability to remove one of his roles. And I can save that. And when I come back to Manage User Access, you'll see that I now only have granted John Watson access to the channel management role. I've gotten rid of the, the product role permission. Or alternatively, if I want to revoke all of his access, then I can go ahead and delete him as a user who's able to access my account. And I can click yes. And that information took. So this concludes our demo of the multi-user account access feature within the developer dashboard. We hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.